How's it going, everybody? It's Polyfam, and we are back with another FPL live stream. And today it is the Game Week 11 deadline stream. If you're watching this over on YouTube, this is a live stream VOD. That's why it says it in the title. I do these over on Twitch if it's midweek uh, at 7 p.m. EDT typically. There's usually a pinned comment down below on pretty much every video that I do to let you know when the next streams are uh, ahead of time. So if you're watching this over on YouTube, you can still get the same content, but you just don't get the interactivity uh, live uh, and exclusive as in me talking uh i'm talking my thoughts over uh, i do usually try to be uh, in the chat at least when the video does premiere um if because it's usually like during like my lunch break uh, time uh which is which is nice uh but sometimes i don't get to so if you want to get the uh, the questions guaranteed asked uh then come over on twitch uh so yeah how's it going oliver yo 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 to you as well um, but yeah, we're going to talk over uh, how the team's looking. We're going to take a look at a few things in the Fantasy Football Scout members area, some future transfers. Uh, and yeah, we're going to talk about Conte's uh, Spurs and will he save them? Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's talk about Fantasy Football Scout. So, Fantasy Football Scout have a fantastic members area that you all need to get right on it if you haven't done so already we're going to see some of the tables in it today these are custom ones that i've made based on opta driven stats uh, so it's going to be fantastic because it's opta stats and that's the best that the basic everyone has to offer in terms of the footballing world pretty much uh and uh, fantasy football scout use that for the members area they also have a bunch of different other tools they usually have a preseason offer as well Make sure to check it out. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's in the description below or it's in the about section if you're here on Twitch. Make sure to check that out as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. I love Conte. Feel bad for him having to manage Spurs. I think he'll probably enjoy it, to be honest. Personally. I think Antonio Conte will enjoy it because he does... He really likes a challenge. This will be his toughest job yet, for sure. Inter had a pretty good team uh, when he went to it. Chelsea's always had a pretty good team since Abramovich has come in, basically. Um, actually, I, I, I tell a fib there. It will be his second toughest job. His toughest job was the Italy team in 2016, which was terrible. I'm pretty sure I could have made that squad if I was Italian. Although sometimes I think I do with the amount that I like lasagna and pasta and spaghetti and yeah. Um, I do like a lot of Italian food. Like uncharacteristically a lot of Italian food. Um, so maybe I'll have to get one of those. Uh, maybe that'll be a, if I ever make a second channel one day or something like that. Maybe that'll be on the second channel. Pilot Flame takes a, a, a my, uh, what do they call my heritage test or whatever. And see if I am. Uh, that'd be interesting. Um, so yeah. Very, very interesting. Yeah, I think Conte is, uh, he's going to enjoy it. Um, I think he's going to enjoy it. So, um, he, he has full control over the team. He's basically got Daniel Levy by the balls, effectively. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's going to be like, look, we need a central midfielder that's going to be able to progress the ball that isn't Skip because he's bad. Um, or isn't very good as a player. Sorry, Skip. Um, we need somebody who's going to be a backup to Harry Kane. We need, uh... Uh, all new center backs basically um and maybe a right wing back so yeah um he's definitely gonna want that should i take a my should i take dinier out for emerson royal for minus four no i would not i don't think i would take a minus four for any defender except this is a big exception if it was like uh trent or cancelo or you know a nailed a nailed defender like i wouldn't even do it for chill war james at the moment it's basically just Cancelo or Trent, really. And they were playing like Norwich or a Fulham, if Fulham was still in the league. They were playing like a really, really bad team at home or something like that. And the defender that I was going to get rid of was either I was going to bench them or they had a terrible, terrible fixture. So if it was like, I don't know, uh, Matt Loughton um, away to Chelsea this week and I didn't have... Um, and I didn't have, uh, you know, Trent and he was playing Norwich at home. That's when I would probably do it if I had the funds to, you know, to make the minus four happen. Uh, but otherwise than that, I wouldn't be taking a minus four for any defender, really. Minus fours for attackers is a bit different because they typically cost more uh, on the most part. And they can also generate typically more points than defenders do on average. 
Are you planning on getting Trossard anytime soon or any of the Brighton assets? I put Trossard as one of my... I think I put him as my differential this week, I believe. Let's take a look at Leandro Trossard. Uh, uh, if I can spell. Trossard, there we go. So, Brighton's fixtures are actually not bad. Um, I have considered putting Sanchez as one of my goalkeepers. Um, and having a set and forget, and then maybe just playing Ben Foster over that time. But I like the look of Ramsdale, and at the time, Raya was looking good, so now I've kind of stuck with it. Trossard has looked good. I think as a differential, uh, he could do quite well in this game week uh, versus Newcastle. I think Leeds at home could be a very good uh, fixture for him. He wouldn't be like my starting week-in, week-out midfielder. He would come in for basically these, these easy fixtures, this, these Newcastle's, Leeds... Um, you know, Wolves maybe, Brentford even. Um, those would be the fixtures that he would come in for. He would be like my fourth slash fifth midfielder if I had one. He would be quite expensive for that, but that's what I would go for uh, with him uh, there. But I do think if you're looking for a differential pick uh, this week and you're wall carding over the, the international break, I can definitely see it being good. But Tottenham's next seven fixtures are easy. That is true. They are easy, but... The question, I mean, Digne is, is kind of bad. But the thing is, Spurs played tonight. They played versus a team I've never heard of. I don't know what league they're in. I think they're called Vitinesi. Vit, 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 I, I don't even know how to pronounce Let me see if I can pronounce the name. I'll bring it up on my second monitor here. Uh, Tottenham. I don't even know if they end up winning. They did. They end up winning 3-2. It, they played Vitesse. Uh, and Vitesse are SBV Vitesse. W what league do they play in? They play in the Dutch league, the Eredivisie. Where are they in the Eredivisie? Well, they're actually fifth. Hmm. Mind you, Aza Alkmaar is a ninth, who are typically quite good. Um, but yeah, I've never heard I've never heard of this team before, to be perfectly honest with you. But if they're ahead of, you know, uh Aza Alkmaar, if they're you know only a few points behind um uh Fire Nord uh and PSV, um then they must be somewhat okay. But genuinely, I've never heard of them before. No disrespect to them, but I genuinely don't know who they are. Um, um, so yeah, yeah, I, 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 gen I like I, I do know a decent bit of football teams, like across other leagues, but outside of the major, the major, uh, major regions, I ain't got a clue. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna, I ain't gonna claim to uh, claim to know. Good evening, Mono. Glad that you could join us as well. Um, apparently, Emerson Royale played very good at right wing back. He probably will do. Um, the problem is, is that a player can be really good at wing back, can be really good at wing back, but you want clean sheets from him on a consistent basis. If you can get clean sheets on him on a consistent basis, and I mean two and five, three and five, then you're looking real good over over an, an easy run of fixtures, right? So that's what. Um, that's what you're going to be looking for. And Spurs haven't showed that. They conceded two to a team that I didn't even know who they were. <laughs> Which uh, still shows that they have some problems in defense. I think I would be looking mainly at Son. Son looked Son and Region were the two that, from what I can tell, heat map wise and like where they were picking up the ball, looked great. Um, so, yeah, I think that's who we're... Um, uh, that's that. That's that's who I think you should be looking at, if if, if anything. Um, Emerson Royale could also easily be dropped for Doherty. Remember that. Whereas Region kind of really doesn't have anyone that can compete with him on that level. Um, that's just my opinion. Chelsea loaned out Mason Mount there for like a year. I did not know that. <laughs> my worst fantasy week in five years. Uh, well done to you. Look at that rank. Yeah, the rank's looking good. If you had a bad week, remember. You can always recover. You can always recover. There was, um, I want to say, I think it was, who was it? 
it was one of the main like uh, FF Scout guys. Uh, it was either last season or a couple seasons ago. Basically, they were up in the millions come like game week ten, and they ended up um, they ended up getting in like the top fifty k, which is like a really really good uh, uh, like climb from that point on. Um, so yeah, just take it week by week. Set yourself goals. Say by uh, uh, you know this week I want to if I'm in the if I'm at, at the million mark uh, I want to be eight hundred k. Um, after 800k, I want to be, uh, 700k, then 600, you know, that sort of stuff. That's the kind of targets you need to set yourself. Um, focus on what, what's ahead this week. You can do a little bit of planning, but don't, the thing that I've learned this season, the reason why my rank is so, so good right now with one, had a good bit of luck, which comes with the, the territory with the game. Two, um, it's going to be different for every manager, but I found that last season I was always like, finding reasons to take hits when i just didn't need to like this week would i like son in my team of course i would but the rest of my team is perfectly fine and capable um of doing well i can get on son after the international break yeah i might lose a little bit of value but sometimes you have to be a bit patient because remember you take four points every time you take a hit now double game weeks a little bit different and that sort of stuff and you know then then maybe if like if Mbemo was out which he's not by the looks of it would i take him out for son maybe but i like to keep myself you know two free transfers like i did last like i didn't do it a lot last season at all i always found myself trying to make a think of ways to make a transfer every week trying to do something i mean i took a minus 16 last year as well which i think actually broke even at the end of it sort of um but this season it's been I've only taken uh, one hit, I think, all season so far. Um, and I want to say my transfer going into the international break. So um, that's what I would say. It works differently for every manager. If you're ones that like to take hits and you like to roll the dice. I just feel like last season and this season so far, rolling the dice on uh, differentials have been few and far between on the whole. This season's been a little bit back to normal, a little bit. Uh, with like Reese James and Chilwell, if you got on those early, then you probably did well. Double City defense paid off early on in the season. Um, Man United hasn't looked as good, uh, apart from really Ronaldo, to be honest, uh, fantasy wise. If you didn't have Liverpool like at all, you were kind of screwed uh, in terms of like Salah and Trent, uh, realistically. Um, and the forwards, apart from really Antonio, haven't done anything uh, of note. So um, yeah, it's been a bit of bit of a weird season so yeah um you should check out Ant Anthony's highlights right winger from Ajax the next Neymar I mean he he's really really good Ajax tend to make good players they, they play total football they probably know how to play in a multitude of positions which is why I'm confused why Donny van der Beek just doesn't play uh for United um like today uh for the England squad Jesse Lingard and Sancho not in it because Gareth Sol Gareth I can't even get my words up Gareth Southgate basically came out and said, they're just not playing. So, what can I do? Hopefully Mount is fit for this weekend. Mount would definitely uh, definitely helps Chelsea do well, uh, for sure. Uh, mind you, I don't think they've needed him over the, the uh, uh, in the last game. Mind you, they did score seven versus Norwich, but I think they could have done that without Mount anyway. Even though he did get three goals and an assist. Got 35 points. Yeah, that is a bit of a tough one. That is a bit of a tough one. Uh, but hey, there's always this week. There's always this week. There's always next week. There's always the week after until game week 38, and then there's no weeks after that. But you still have plenty of time. Just keep it keep it calm. I the one thing I've learned this season, this is gonna be one of my written rules for forever. When you think when you have when you have more than two decisions, when you have like three, four, five different decisions that you can do. Um, and you don't have two free transfers. There's like, I could bring in Son. I could bring in Kane for a hit. I can take out Diaz and get a triple Chelsea defender. Or I can do um, Jota to, uh, down to Rafinha or something like that because Jota's injured or, or whatever. And then do a hit with another defender or something crazy like that. Just do nothing. Just roll the transfer. Because often, more times than not, when you take out somebody or you react too fast... Um, you get burnt for it. Like, there was the whole, like, son tested positive scare. A lot of managers that were on wall card or had him, took him out, and then what happened? It was, turns out it was fake news, basically, uh, and then he played and he scored and got 10 points. So, 
yeah, I always, I'm, I'm always being much more patient now. Now, patience can also could burn me next season, could burn me this season still, to be honest, because I won't have as high of a, a value potentially on some some of my players unless I basically started with a bunch of them, um, or you wall card earlier because that's typically when things are a bit more erratic. Um, keep or sell Ronaldo. I think Ronaldo's a big game player. Um, from what I can tell, I don't think Kane is going to potentially suit um, Conte's system as much if he plays a 3-4-3, which will Conte did tonight. If he plays a 3-5-2 with Son and Kane as a strike partnership up front, Lukaku and Lazaro Martinez uh, at Inter basically got the same number of goal returns, whether it be goals and assists. Lukaku had more goals because he took penalties as well. So I would say keep Ronaldo for this week. If Kane does something, then you can maybe look to go for him. Um, United do have uh, Watford, I believe, afterwards. Um What's United's run? Or is it Chelsea? I can't remember. So Man United play City. Yeah, they play Watford after the international break. Then they play Chelsea and Arsenal. So two of those fixtures should be easy. But again, it, it depends on what United show up. But um, if you want to get rid of Ronaldo, this would be the week to do it. But you could probably only do it for Kane. Um realistically if you wanted to jump on Spurs early but United could easily score versus City it's very possible the only way United are going to sc score basically is a moment of magic um, they hit City on the break or a set piece and Ronaldo is pretty good on all of them yeah my squad value probably is too much for me to focus it's 102.5 that's one thing I haven't really actually looked at all season basically the squad value haven't looked at it. I mean, I have, because I've had to put it in some of the graphics. <laughs> Excuse me. But um, I haven't really paid attention to it, to be honest. Like, sometimes I've been point one off or whatever. And sometimes it's for the better, sometimes it's for the worse. But I think having more information could be just as valuable... As, as having an extra 0.1 million, basically. So, like, I could have easily um, got rid of Mbemo, uh for Son. And been like, yeah, I'm on the Son hype train. Thinking Son's not going to play tonight. Son could have easily played tonight, got injured, and then boom. You know, then what? I'm down a transfer, and Son's now injured for however long. He's not injured. But I'm saying that stuff like that has happened in the past. I suppose starting Foster over Ramsdale was a killer. Having Havertz has butchered me. Just stay focused. Still 160k overall. Yeah, you're you're more than fine. You're more than fine. I mean, I benched Ramsdale as well. I had a goalkeeper that got the same amount of points as Foster. So, yeah. I did Diaz to Chilwell from Monday for mine. Yeah, I mean, you could do that too. Because you kind of figured that Chilwell wasn't going to play versus Malmo. And he's likely to start versus Burnley. There is still this thing in the back of my mind that says like, oh, well, Tuchel said before he likes Alonso because of his height versus Burnley. We'll see. Uh, but that was like one of the first couple of games that he, um, when he was uh, just coming in to Chelsea. I have Lukaku on my bench for when he returns. Um, I mean, Lukaku is probably just going to keep going down and down and down to be honest, but it seems like most of the returns are just coming from the wingbacks. Whoever's playing wingback and um, one of the people that, you know, one of the players is not playing the number nine role, get the returns for Chelsea. So I would potentially look to get rid of Lukaku. I mean, I got rid of him, but yeah. Um, what's your city, what's your city player's opinion for big game? Um, I have Cancelo and Foden currently. Uh, and Gallagher is a good cheap option. He is a very good option. He's someone I wish I probably... Looking back on it, I probably should have gone... Like, in hindsight, 2020, I should have gone with him over Mbemo. Because Mbemo was, is not a good finisher because of the amount of times he's hit the post. Um, 
but I was just looking at uh, future Brentford fixtures. I should have just gone with, hey, look, this guy's in form. He's doing well. Um, he has halfway decent fixtures as well. Um, let's go with him. So, yeah. Uh, and Chris Palace have done really, really well. I think I'm probably going to get them wrong in the predictions <laughs> when we go to look at that at the end of the season. Um, so you have Cancelo and Foden. So a lot of, a lot of managers are going to have Cancelo, Foden, Diaz, uh, maybe Grealish, um, maybe Mares, but mostly Cancelo, Foden will probably be quite popular. At least Cancelo. Um, in the big games, um, I would be inclined to play at probably like, so if I have City, double City defense versus United. City this season have only scored eight goals away from home which is like under, uh, it's under two goals a game. So it's around one, one and two thirds or whatever. United's defense hasn't been great, but in a derby, anything's possible, right? So for me, I would probably put Cancelo. I'd start Cancelo. Like if I look at, so it, it, it depends on a team by team basis as well. So like for me, is Diaz worth benching for Rafinha versus Leicester at home? Probably, I would say. Rafinha scored last week. Uh, Leicester aren't the greatest defensively. Um, you know, I think Rafinha could do well. St. Maximum versus Brighton away. Newcastle aren't great. Um, and they're away from home. Would I play Diaz over St. Maximum? Probably, I would say. Eh, it's It's tough. If Newcastle were still doing decent, I would probably play Sam Axman over Diaz. But in recent times, you know, the, the United vs. City games have been somewhat close. Um, with United getting the edge in a few of them. And then Brown Hill's definitely not. Um, so most likely what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Rafinha over Diaz. And then probably favor St. Maximin over, over Diaz. Um, and kind of hedge my bets a little bit. Typically, I like to play the attacker over um, over the defender. But with defenders been doing so well this season, can't really complain too much for playing a defender. But Diaz, over the last few weeks since we've... Literally, they got all these clean sheets. Um, I bring in Diaz for this run, which I think... He, I was like, oh yeah, he's going to get a few clean sheets here. They've gotten none. Uh, because one, he didn't play in the one that they did keep a clean sheet. Uh, and the other two, they conceded. So, yeah. I think what what's more likely to happen is uh, Rafinha is going to come in uh, for Diaz. That'll probably be most likely what I do. Um, and then say Maximin probably um, first. That's, that's probably what's going to happen. I think that's what I had in my lineup preview as well. Um, that's probably what I'm going to go for. Let's see. So, has got Ramsdale, Trent, Cancelo, Chilwell. Yep, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, might not get much clean sheets out of those three this week, but you never know. Attack returns could happen. Ooh, excuse me. Um, and Bermo, Havertz, Foden, and Salah Captain. That is perfectly fine. Antonio, Vardy, and Tony, and then you got subs. You got Foster, Duffy, Libramento, and Brownhill. Will I play one on my bench instead? So the only person that you can probably say on the bench that is worth playing um, this week because you know he's guaranteed going to start and could get you something is Libramento. And the reason I say that is because I don't think Duffy is necessarily a guaranteed starter. But he can come on as a sub if Brighton are up 1-0 and they want to shut up shop and they want to bring an extra defender. Duffy could easily come on. So I think Livermento should be your first sub um, over Duffy. Um, and I think that the player that he could potentially play over, even though I still wouldn't do this, would be potentially Antonio. Um... But even then, it would be still a bit tricky to do. I would just put Livermento first sub and keep the team as is, to be honest. 
Antonio's form across the whole season has been ridiculous. Um, he's cooled off as of late, um, which is why I said to sell him uh, last week. Um, got a lot of stick for that, but he didn't score. Um, yes, his fixtures are very good come like game week 18 or whatever it is, but that's, what, seven game weeks away or something like that? He could be injured by then. Who knows? Would you bring in... Uh, would you bring in James for a minus four? No, I wouldn't. Because James might not even play. You don't know. You could be taking a minus four for nothing. I think your team's perfectly fine as it is. Just move Livermento to first first bench, then put Duffy second, Brownhill third. That's what I would do. Unfortunately, your team has some, some issues. It's got Trent versus Antonio... Um, it's got Cancelo um, and Foden playing Man United. Um, but, yeah. It is what it is. That's going to happen. That is going to happen. So, but yeah, I wouldn't take a minus four for, like I said, any defender unless it's literally... I'm bringing in Trent or Cancelo. They're playing 90 minutes every week. Uh, they're going up against, like, some terrible team like Norwich or, or Watford or, 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 or somebody like that. Um, and I'm taking out a, a defender that I'm not going to use or they're injured or something like that. I'm happy with mine, but yours looks good too. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of good teams. I mean, this my team this week could get a red arrow. Team looks great on paper. Got three, three players playing against Norwich. Looking good. Jimenez has got um, two returns for me in the last two weeks. Uh, Rafinha's looking good. Smith Rose looking good. Salas typically does well versus West Ham. Uh, Cancelo should beat. They should beat United in theory. Double Chelsea defense has been doing ridiculously well for me. Everyone's jumping on them now. Um, but we could, I could get it wrong. I, I, it, it just all depends. I got the players in there. I have them in the positions for them to do well. It's just a matter of if they do. And that's where kind of the luck comes into it. Um, the skill aspect is when and where to, to basically play your cards as it were, when, to, when, when are you going to, when are you going to make the transfer, when are you going to be active in doing it and that sort of stuff. The seven, no Norwich for Chelsea and Havertz, no show. Let's hope Tony and Bomo bang. Yep. That would be the hope. That would be the hope. Um, Havertz was very unlucky. Very, very unlucky. Like people who brought in Havertz, if you brought in Havertz, and you captained him over Mo Salah. I think that was a poor decision, personally, because of Salah's form. Um, and the amount of goals that Chelsea number 9 score is not very high. But bringing in Havertz itself in isolation as its own transfer was very, very good, in my opinion. I didn't do it personally because I didn't have the team structure to do it. Um, but I think if, if you did bring him in, you would have felt very hard-pressed uh, for him to not get anything in a 7-0, no, right? If me personally, now people say, oh, well, you knew this because you, you're saying this now because Mount scored three goals and got an assist or something crazy. If I was going to bring in a Chelsea midfielder, it would have been Mount. And that's mainly because I would have looked at it for a longer term. I don't. Last season, I did this a lot. I would keep bringing in players for a couple of fixtures and then want to get rid of them immediately. Right. So this season, I've been a bit more patient with players. Uh, for the most part. Like St. Maximan, I thought I was going to get... <laughs> I, I thought I was going to get rid of him in a couple of weeks. And he's still uh, still in my team. So. And now. He, he has potentially Norwich at home. And Burnley at home. So I'm going to have to make some serious decisions. Because this is around the time where I might want Ronaldo back. I might need some extra funds and drop him way down to a non-playing forward. Who knows, right? Who knows? So we'll have to wait and see. But um, let's take a look at one of the tables here. So the one main thing that everyone's you know talking about is, is should we be captaining Salah? This is the Fantasy Football Scout members area. For those that you um, that don't know, this is what one of the tables that I've made looks like. It is sorted by expected goal involvement over the last four game weeks. And I've put a bunch of players that have really good fixtures this week. Um, so like Kane and Son uh, with Antonio Conte. 
uh, which we'll talk about um, in just a bit, actually. Um, let me bring up... Uh, I'm going to bring up the tactics board off to the side as well. Because we're going to do that in just a second. Uh, new window. Boom. Uh, clear that. Clear that. Move that. There we go. So that's the tactics board. We'll come back to that in a bit. So, sort it by expected goal and moment. We got a bunch of different players in there that could do well this week or could be captain worthy. Salas, by and far, up top. He's got five goals and four assists over the last four games, which is nuts. It's absolutely insane. Um,. He's just going absolutely crazy. Son's creating a good bit of chances. Uh, Antonio's even creating chances, which is why I think his, his numbers have dropped off. He's only got one goal in the last four games, makes no assists. But he's created 10 chances. Uh, he's created a big chance. So you would think that he probably should have got more than what he's, than what he's got at the moment. Uh, and that's showing here. 2.23, so he's expected to have at least got another goal or an assist. And he has nothing for it, basically. Son is slightly underperforming. Uh, Mane is overforming 1.63 with three goals. Um, so yeah, and there's like obviously the Chelsea defenders are drastically overforming 0.8 and 0.93 for Chilwell and Reese James, and they've both got three goals each to show for it. So yeah, there, there's going to be times where they're going to be overperforming and that sort of stuff. But Salah is by and far the best captain to pick at the moment. Having other players in your team at the moment is somewhat of a good differential. Since there's no premium that is rivaling Salah for the amount of damage he's doing in a game. I mean, if we just look at his... just If we just look at him. He has gotten a goal and an assist. A goal and or an assist in every game except for when they won 2-0 to Burnley. Like, some of these numbers are just absolutely... Like, 13-13-24... And before that, oh, just a standard 7, 12, 8, 10. He's just been going crazy. The guy's got 112 points in 10 games. He's going to break his record if he keeps going like this. He is absolutely crazy. Um, and I think West Ham, uh, I remember him getting two balls over the top. It was 1-1, very cagey. Late on, later on in the game, it was like last 15, 20 minutes or so. Two, two counterattacks by Liverpool. Bang, bang. Salah on the break. Two goals. Game over. And I think Salah uh, against West Ham is the team he scored the most against with nine goals, I believe, in the Premier League, which is... Um, an interesting stat because it seems like he likes scoring versus West Ham, uh, which is good. So yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be. Uh, it'd be foolish to captain anyone but Salah, in my opinion. Even though he just got an assist last week, I think he's gonna get something in this game. West Ham can be playing as well as they want. Salah's probably gonna get something. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then if we also look at the captaincy against table here as well. Um, you will see that on the XG conceded, West Ham's actually the best over the last four game weeks. They're, they are the best, um, which is, you know, damning against captaining Salah, basically. But I think that Salah just, when you have a team's number, you typically just do well. That also being said, anyone who's got City assets, uh, who's got Arsenal assets... Uh, who's got Brighton assets or Southampton assets. Uh, you could be looking at very easy defenses to play against. United hasn't been great. Varane's injured again. Uh, Villa have looked all over the place trying to change systems. Watford have changed managers. Newcastle have a, tear, a caretaker manager. Spurs could be looking at a very good outfit versus uh, Everton. So, yeah. And Everton could be a lot worse. They've conceded 15 big chances and only conceded 9 goals, which is... Uh, 
uh, it could be a lot worse for them, basically. Could be a lot worse. So, yeah, very, very bad uh, for them as well. Uh, and now let's take a look at the goals imminent table. So this is a table that's basically designed to show you who is likely to score uh, this coming week. Um, and there's some, some, some tasty names on there. So Ronaldo's on there. So Ronaldo's expected to have at least scored a little bit more than what he, than what he should have. Um, Chris Wood is on there as well. Uh, Leandro Trossard, one of our differential picks. Uh, Ivan Tony, he sh should have been scored a long time ago. Um, Jinmin Son, again, we'll talk about that in, in uh, Conte's new system uh, in a bit. Uh, Redmond, he's missed, I saw him miss a sitter, which was very, very bad. Thomas Partey, that's mainly just because he shoots too much. Uh, Nordgaard, uh, Kane's on there as well. For now, Rafinha's even on there. Cancelo's on there. Ben Rama and Antonio are on there as well. So very, very interesting. Now, let's move over to the tactics board. So let's talk about Spurs. Good old Tottenham Hot Spurs. Lads, it's Spurs. So, Antonio Conte set, uh, set Spurs out in a 3-4-3 system tonight. Uh, he had, I believe it was Lloris in goal. Um, he had uh, Ben Davies at left-sided centre-back. Uh, he had uh, Romero as his uh, central, uh, basically, playmaker in, in the back three. Uh, and the other center back he had was Eric Dyer. Um, at least I think that's how it was lined up on paper. Uh, let me go. Uh, Tottenham. Tottenham. Apparently Dyer was the central of the three center backs. Well, that's kind of weird because I think Dyer could be quite good at driving forward, but regardless. Um, doesn't really matter too, too much in the grand scheme of things for the time being. Um, then he had uh, Reggion at left wing back. He had uh, Emerson Royale at right wing back. Um, he had Oliver Skip. And Hoiberg, Hoiberg, I think uh, I did not spell that right. Uh, how do I spell Hoiberg's name? Hoiberg. I'll just go H, Hberg, because I don't know how to spell his name. <laughs> um. He had uh, Son, he had Kane, and he had uh, Lucas Moura. So, Antonio Conte plays two different types of systems. He either plays a 3-4-3, or he... Um, I'll just put uh, an extra sub over here. Uh, and Dombele. Um, a 3-4-3 or a 3-5-2 with a duo strike partnership. Now, in his 3-4-3 days, uh, this was mainly at Chelsea, you often saw in that system, you had uh, uh, a back three with uh, typically both center backs capable of being very solid defensively, but also making driving runs forward on the outside to help support um, the, the, the wide fullbacks. These fullbacks often got very high, very wide, uh, on the touchline, using to create chances from deep or getting to the byline and looking for cutbacks. In central midfield, this was occupied by two very destroyer-like uh, midfielders. Uh, Matic and Conte are two that spring to mind uh, in Chelsea system, which could be expanded upon if they needed a bit more guile, if they're playing against a team where they needed a bit more creativity from deep. One could potentially be sacrificed for the likes of a ball carrier uh, out of midfield rather than just a straight destroyer and just simple passer of the ball. And one that um, springs to mind for Chelsea would be Cesc Fabregas. But typically, it's played with two destroyers uh, on the most part. Uh, and then in the front three, uh, the forwards, 
uh, would not be wide players. They'd be tucking inside, uh, supporting and getting close to the central striker who would often occupy this portion of the box and the other forwards occupying uh, this area or this area and, and you know, allowing for, uh, you know, runs in beyond uh, the forward. This, this forward as well could typically occupy this space and look to link play uh, into the uh, like sides of the box or look to link play out wide uh, to the fullback. So the striker is very crucial. Diego Costa was the main focal point for Chelsea during Conte's uh, title winning season. Now, what Spurs will probably most likely play uh, when the transfer window is over, um, if Conte can get this sort of player, is um, is they need a proper, proper destroyer, um, and they need uh, basically a, a, a midfielder that he likes that can basically play Barella's role at uh, how it was at Inter. A very progressive midfielder could often pick up spaces in and around the box, uh, very creative, uh, but also able to uh, get back and into shape uh, when needed, often playing in this right-sided uh, central midfield role, uh, which we shall show you what the system looks like instead. And it looks more like that. So in in a system, they play uh, a very tight, uh, a very uh, a very uh, low block. They get back into shape. Uh, they 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 play very compact, giving space out on the flanks, uh, and looking to uh, once they're in shape, uh, looking to press uh, in this area and spring into the counter uh, when available. That is what Spurs are probably eventually going to look to do. Uh, once they get basically, I'll, I'll just swap these. So I think Endo Belly can play this role, but I think he might get ditched for somebody that can potentially be a bit more up and down the field. They need someone who's going to have a lot of energy and also very, very consistently creative. Uh, Endo Belly is very good at driving uh, with the ball as well. So maybe he could be used um, in like the box to box position in here because he can be depressed, which is very useful. Um, so what I think will probably happen is Skip will get replaced by somebody, basically. So some defensive midfielder. Um, think uh, Brozovic uh, at Inter. Very good destroying midfielder that can play um, that can play out from the back uh, quite well. Hoiberg can play more as that box-to-box -box, uh, midfielder, and then Dumbele can be that more creative force, getting uh, alongside, uh, getting up with the strikers, um, typically in these positions, making runs into the box uh, as well, and and just creating more. Reguilon, I think, is a perfectly fine right uh, left wing back. Emerson Royale being a good sided right wing back. Um, the other position that would probably need to be changed would be. Uh, center backs. So one of the changes I would make immediately would be Eric Dyer would be uh, replaced uh, in the current team if they were only allowed to make you know a signing or two in the in the window and save things for the summer. Would be uh, Jaffet uh, Tanganga, very dynamic, very good with driving the ball, has incredible pace uh, and very young, uh, and can help out Emerson Royale uh, if he gets beat in basically these spaces here. Tanganga could be just used as very good cover and they can focus mainly the driving runs from this center back which i think needs to would be the change now this center back could be a bunch of different players um you know i'm just trying to think of uh, who would be uh, potentially a good uh uh conte inter milan I'm trying to think who played left i want to say it was devry um Who played left side at centre back? I could be wrong though. Oh no, Devry was the centre. Um, Scrinier and Bastoni. Yeah, Bastoni was the one who played there. He was a very young centre back. Um, that was very good at driving with the ball, very creative as well. So they basically need a Bastoni like replacement in that area. And then this centre back, which I think Christian Romero is very good at, uh, he was for Atalanta as well, playing as this like deep lying playmaker 
uh, to allow uh, switches outside to the uh, fullbacks in high and wide areas or playing deep balls into the channel for Kane or Son uh, to run on to. But typically what the tactic is going to be is when out of possession, um, they will compact into a 5-3-2 out of possession. Very, very compact. Once they're back into the shape, Son and Kane uh, will lead the press. Uh, and Dumbele, Royale, uh, Hoiberg and Region will also press out and they will look to see if they can uh, nick the ball off opposition in their own half but in like the, the this this middle third overall but typically most of it will probably come in in you know in this this sort of area here and then they can spring onto the counter in behind typically with Kane a willing to play Son in behind that's what Inter Milan did a lot uh, under an, um, Antonio Conte's reign. Uh, I think they scored the most counter-attacking goals in the league, uh, which shows you how well they do. So they're not like Pep Guardiola's team or, or Klopp's team where they try to press you immediately after winning the ball. They will drop back into a shape, let you have the ball. They get themselves set up in a system that they know they can um, do well in, give the enemy false hope, press them once they come into their half, and then spring on the counter. Um, but also, in possession, they can still create chances uh, against low blocks as well. Antonio Conte's system is a very attacking system. You will have situations where the, the, the wingbacks are high and wide, looking to create chances. Hoiberg, uh, Brozovic, uh, and Endabele will be in these positions here. You will see Kane and... Uh, Kane and Son occupying the central uh, positions, and Dembele will look to see if he can get in 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 the spaces in either here or if Kane's here, you know, and occupy these spaces. Brozovic and Hoiberg will be there to recycle possession. You can often sometimes see, depending on which side the ball is on, one of these centre backs surging runs forward into the box or surging runs um, to help assist. Uh, with link up play on the outside so you can create overloads in this situation where you have like a 4v3 in this area That's what you will see but the main thing that it does uh, With Conte coming in whether he plays a 3-4-3 um, or a 3-5-2 uh, the main thing that we're going to see a lot of is when his team goes to counter, he has the one player that's able to run in behind um, and and latch on to those counter-attacking options. And the best player to do that at Spurs is Hyun Min Son. He's the one to highlight. He's also on the same side, typically, as Region. And I think there's going to be many times where the ball is going to be switched out to, to Region, who's going to basically play a curved, a curved ball in behind for Son to latch on, and then he's going to be in on goal. Kane might link up the play in this area, spray it out wide to Region, who's going to be up and down this, this sideline, and Son's going to be bursting through the middle, and those two are potentially going to be linking up quite well. Kane's going to be more of the, like, get the ball, shield it, play it in behind, probably. The, the big man, little man uh, type uh, situation. Um, although Kane can still do runs in behind if given the space to do so. He's just not the quickest. Son is probably best suited uh, to do so. So in terms of FPL assets, the ones to keep a real close eye on, uh, in my opinion, would be Region, would be Son, and it would be Kane. And potentially, potentially, whoever comes in this role here as the uh, the attacking midfielder, whoever comes comes in this role as the attacking midfielder, like the Barella, they will often pick up uh, a decent um, number of returns as well. But I think the main three that you're looking at is Son is probably first priority uh, based on what we know of Conte's system. Uh, second could be uh, Region. Uh, and Kane would also be second, like they'd be second priority. They'd be secondary. I think Son is the main one that you're going to be uh, you're going to be looking at uh, mainly. Those are going to be the ones that you're looking for FPL wise. Uh, and if they keep clean sheets, great. Um, 
Reguillon will definitely get those. Royale could be a differential, but remember he has Doherty. Um, can't even spell his name. Don't even know that's how you spell it, but uh, Doherty could be a backup to Emerson Royale. There's no realistic backup to Reguillon that how Conte wants to play. He wants his wing backs to be up and down the pitch, up and down the pitch. Ben Davies isn't that. Reguillon has a fantastic delivery. He's up and down the pitch. He's very good, um, or at least he's solid defensively. Um, and he's only going to help even more when they get a center back who can occupy this position, similar to how Antonio Rudiger does for Chelsea. You find Rudiger with the ball in possession around this area, and he often drives into this space, committing uh, defenders and, and midfielders towards him for him to lay the ball in behind or play a quick wall passes, and then he makes his way into the box for a potential attacking return and then sets himself up uh, for that if he if he needs to or if it looks like it, it is on. And then you still have the, the coverage. So if, if Reguillon's out wide, uh, Son's on the corner trying to assist, uh, you still have Hoiberg uh, and Brozovic that can cover for like this bursting run um, into the box. Royale's out wide. Because um, you can have Tanganga as he bursts in. Hoiberg can fill this space. Brozovic is in this space. Tanganga in this space. Uh, and Romero could be could be in here. And if teams stick their, their front three, as it were. So let's say it's Liverpool. If Liverpool are keeping their, you know, their front three uh, up the pitch, whether it be, you know, Firmino, Mane, and Salah, you still have a 4v3 scenario here. And you still have uh, Romero able to play it back to the keeper if needed. Uh, Romero can still be deep enough to where he can still look to provide from, from this area, playing it uh, using, you know, switches out wide to, to either side. So you always have a numbers advantage uh, in that scenario, even with you know loading the box with 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 four players and and, and two two wide players. Um, the only uh, way this this situation gets kind of messed up is if you aren't paying attention to the space here, um, which is where uh, these two players will have to be in you know good communication. If if there's a guy that ends up going into into this space here. Uh, that's going to be looking to link these guys as they run in behind like that. Brozovic has to step in where he's very good at. And then this center back here has to follow. Uh, and then you still have a 3v3, which is still... You would take that in an aerial battle uh, versus quick guys on the counter. And you can still cut it out. And that's where you can take... Yeah, that you see often Fernandinho and Rodri and, um, you know, Kante and all the best defensive midfielders take down guys in this area all the time. They can do it four, five, six times a game and not get a yellow, basically. Um, assuming they do it nicely, as it were. But yeah, that's uh, how I think Spurs are going to play. So I think Son is probably priority number one. I think he's going to be the little man, as it were, uh, in the front two. Uh, in a front three, he's going to benefit uh, from Reguillon. He's going to be tucking inside. Uh, he's going to be more involved in the box. Um, he's going to be receiving the ball more in the box. Um, and he's going to be the outlet ball uh, nine times out of ten. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Son, Reguillon, and Kane probably is who I would say to, to, to go for. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you will have approximately five minutes or so left on the FPL deadline. If you're watching this here on Twitch, you're fine. The deadline's tomorrow. Uh, but remember, uh, it is a... Uh, so in the UK, it would be a... So if it's... Uh, I think it'd be 6.30 um, deadline for the UK if I've done my uh, uh, my uh, my calculations correctly uh, because I believe it's at the 8 o'clock kickoff um, in the UK between Southampton and Aston Villa. Um, so make sure to have your teams ready before that. Um, Fantasy Football Scout will be doing their team news video tomorrow. So we'll see some manager press conferences. We'll see who's fit and available. Um... And we'll see how things go. We'll get to see what Antonio Conte says after the game uh, tonight as well. Uh, which will be interesting to see. We'll see what Thomas Tuchel has to say. And updates to potentially Timo Werner and Romelu Lukaku. We'll see what Pep and Solskjaer have to say for the Manchester Derby. Um, 
and Buemo, I think I read, because uh, I retweeted it, uh, should be fit and available uh, by the looks of it. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see how things, uh, how things go. For transfers, I'm not looking to make any, looking to get two over the international break, and then potentially looking to bring in some Spurs assets um, on the uh, on those transfers and seeing how well they do. If I was going to go for a set of transfers, um, cities in the interim look not great uh, for clean sheets, but then they look to pick up quite nicely. If they are doing quite well over this run, I think Diaz could be very good, which is why I'd be kind of not really keen on getting rid of him. If Chelsea look to be more rotation heavy during the Christmas period, there is a reason to get off them, to be honest. Um, so that'll be a decision that we have to make. Um, so, yeah. So if there was a plan that I was going to go for, it would be if I wanted to get all three, Kane, Region, and... Um, uh, and Son. I have to get rid of Rafinha, I believe. So if I wanted uh, Son, Kane, Region, yeah, and Keenan Davis, I would have to get rid of uh, Rafinha. <clears throat> and I'd have to keep in Bembo and Smith Rowe. Uh, I would then have to play at least four of my defenders every week. Triple up on Spurs could be a bit heavy, um, to be honest. So I don't think Kane is necessarily the need. He will be on penalties, though, which is nice for Spurs. Um, but penalties might come from Reggion or Son and you know players like that getting taken down. But it all depends on how the system is played. If it's a 3-4-3, Kane's value definitely goes up. If it's a 3-5-2, I think Son's value is way higher than Kane's. But... Um, yeah, so we could easily go, uh, we can use our two free transfers and go Reggion and Son in for Diaz um, and whatever midfielder we want because it doesn't matter which one we get rid of in that case. Um, and then we can see from there. And then maybe, you know, when Man City's fixtures get real good uh, back in 15 and Reggion's, uh, you know, stop after gaming 15 realistically until 19 again, then we can get Diaz back. Because we'll have the money to we'll have the money to do so. Because even if I go um, if I go Son here, uh, I can still get Diaz because Diaz won't probably go up in price almost certainly. So that's kind of what I'm looking at um, transfer wise. Um, the only other things to consider as well uh, to keep in the back of your mind is Manchester United players and gaming 15. Uh, their fixtures start to get real good. Uh, specifically, um, so. Are we going to have funds to, for make ways for uh, for Ronaldo in an ideal scenario? Sh should I just go, okay, well, we'll get rid of uh, some players. We'll get rid of, uh, you know, Jimenez, uh, Rafinha, Diaz, and St. Maximan. Uh, we'll play. We'll have Kane. Uh, we'll have Son. Uh, we'll have uh, Reggion. Uh, and we'll just have a non-playing uh, player in midfield. We still have a bunch of players that we can play. The only thing is our bench would be a lot weaker. Keenan Davis doesn't play. Uh, and there's no real forward from 4.7 million with price rises and price changes that we can get that would still play. Brownhill would still play. Smith Run and Bemo would still play. So for the most part, every week we play a goalkeeper. We'll probably play at least four defenders, most likely five. Uh, we play uh, Son and Salah. We play Kane. Um, and then it'd be, um, it would be two of uh, Mbemo, Tony, and Smith Rowe, uh, most likely. Um, which is something, I, I'd rather have like a Broha or somebody like that in this in this spot. Uh, which we can still do if we didn't have Reggie on. If we had, uh, let's say, like a Lamptey as an example. Or, or a cheap defender, Davis could still be uh, like a Broha as an example. Um, and we still have point three, um, and that would be for uh, a minus eight, basically. Um, if we were to do that, we could also do that over a couple of weeks. And then if we've looked to Manchester United players, you know, Kane can come out, 
Uh, he, we can go for uh, Ronaldo. Um, and then Son can go down to whatever Man United midfielder we would want, uh, potentially, if United are doing well. Um, you know, if we wanted to, if we had, if we just did the one transfer and got Ronaldo in, um, and we wanted to have a United goalkeeper uh, over this over this ridiculous run of fixtures, and United look like they're keeping clean sheets, potentially, um, you know, we could just do two goalkeeper transfers and just get just 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 go for go for De Gea, to be honest. Um, that could be something that we genuinely do uh, if United to keep a clean sheet. But at the moment, it's not looking likely. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it. This is how the team will probably look like. I'd, I'll do a tweet. Um, I won't know because this uh, you'll be seeing this uh, on the deadline, which it should be the deadline by now. Um, so make sure you had, hopefully you had your team set up. This is probably what my team's going to look like almost. Uh, certainly bench order and everything. So Fernandez and goal. Uh, James Chilwell, Trent Cancelo, Rafinha, Smith Rowe, Salah Captain, and Bomo Jimenez, Tony, with Ramsdale, St. Maximan, Diaz, and Brownhill uh, on the bench. And we'll save our transfers going into the international break and look to potentially bring some Spurs players in if they do well versus Everton. So we'll make sure to keep an eye out for that. Also, one last thing to note. Actually, I'll mention that uh, when I go to to the big screen. But we'll talk about Fantasy Football Scout uh, one more time before we log off here. So, if you haven't heard about Fantasy Football Scout, we use some of the tables in the video. Make sure to check them out. And, uh, yeah, they're great. Uh, Opto-driven stats tables. You can customize them to basically any stat you want. Uh, there's, you know... Uh, heat maps, there's player comparison tools, there's a whole bunch of different stuff in the members area. Make sure to go check it out. They also do uh, exclusive videos and stuff for members only as well. So make sure to check that out as well. Link is in the description or in the about section, depending on which platform you are on. Now, let's move over to the big screen. So, that is going to do it for the deadline stream. Uh, this is a live stream VOD. Uh, if you didn't know, I'm going to try to be in the chat, like I said, uh, for it. Um, so if you saw, if you saw me in the chat, hi. This is uh, Pilot Fame from the past. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll try to be involved in the chat uh, for that. Um, also, the international break is coming up as well. There's going to be videos over the international break for that. Uh, for game week 12, now I. Uh, will be I will be on vacation uh, for uh, for the for game week 12 basically uh, and game week 13 and, and and whatnot but for game week 12 specifically I'm gonna be doing um, not as many videos towards the end of the week and that's because um, there's a for those that uh, play uh, a lot of video games Final Fantasy has an expansion coming out for Final Fantasy 14 so I'm gonna be playing that um, but uh, for those who play FPL and don't care it's fine. Uh, just know that I will be doing the deadline stream as per normal for Game Week 13 uh, as well. And you can always make sure to check that out if you follow us over on Twitter and check the pinned comments on every video to make sure that it's the exact time that you are thinking of uh, for those streams as well. But yeah, there probably there just won't be a video um, on, uh, I believe, Thursday and Friday or just Friday, something like that, uh, basically. Um, so yeah, make sure to check that out. Um, and keep, I'll, I'll try to keep uh, you guys posted on Twitter and in the YouTube community area uh, where I post the content list uh, typically when I have a, a bunch of videos to do. So um, we'll do that over the international break. So yeah, the next video that you'll see is going to be, well, it'll be this VOD, uh, but it'll also be the tactics talk for United versus City. And that's going to come out on Sunday. So make sure to check that out as well. And uh, until the next one, take care.